Less than a month after U.S. President Donald Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un held a surprise meeting at the demilitarized zone, North Korea fired what the South Korean government described as a new type of short-range ballistic missile on July 25th. The North calls it a new tactical guided weapon. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff explains the new missiles flew in a unique and rather complicated pattern, similar to that of Russia's Iskander. The solid fuel road mobile missile is known to be easier to transport and hide and also quicker to launch. And what's even more worrying is that the missile can carry nuclear warheads and is harder to track and intercept because it can change its flight path during its entire trajectory. According to a JCS officer, the missiles North Korea fired last week are capable of performing a pull-up maneuver in the final phase. Unlike typical ballistic missiles in the re-entry phase, the Iskander can fly horizontally at a flattened altitude of below 40 kilometers and then dive to attack its target vertically, avoiding interception. These characteristics could neutralize missile defense systems operated by Seoul and Washington on the Korean Peninsula, like Patriot missile batteries and the THAAD anti-missile shield, posing a potentially deadly threat to South Korean and U.S. troops here. And let's say the regime has almost perfected the new weapon through repeated tests, including the ones in early May. The North launched another set of short-range ballistic missiles on Wednesday, just six days after the last test. But why now? What kind of message is the North trying to send, especially ahead of a planned resumption of working-level nuclear talks with the U.S.? Well, Pyongyang made it clear through its state-run media that the test was a solemn warning to South Korea. The Korean Central News Agency slammed South Korea for introducing what it called ultra-modern offensive weapons, referring to Seoul's purchase and ongoing deployment of U.S.-made F-35 fighter jets. The first two of the 40 F-35 stealth jets South Korea ordered from Lockheed Martin have arrived in March. And although the North didn't criticize the U.S. directly this time, many experts believe this is part of Kim Jong-un's tactic of upping pressure on Washington as well to grant more concessions when the two sides sit down for talks again soon. Whatever the case, one thing for sure is that the latest test has clearly demonstrated further technological advancement in North Korea's weapons program, which in turn highlights the lack of meaningful progress in efforts to denuclearize the regime.